Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Coming up in the next half hour, some county residents could see faster fire and rescue services. We'll have a full report. Plus, Rockville hosts a seminar to teach local businesses how to defend against cyber threats. And later, we'll show you where you can see this beautiful butterfly display that will take your breath away. But first, libraries are really branching out and becoming even more state-of-the-art. They are also an important gateway to knowledge for so many people. That's why we're celebrating the grand reopening of one right here in the county. That's a true treasure. Susan Kennedy was there and has this report. Great news for library lovers in the east part of Montgomery County. After being closed for nearly one year for a refresh project, the White Oak Library is back in business. And at the official ribbon cutting, there were plenty of officials and residents on hand to kick off this new chapter for this treasured community resource. This is a very close-knit community, um, and this library obviously is a huge asset. Um, but, you know, it really needed some TLC. Um, I live very close by. My daughters would come here a lot. I would bring them over when my daughter was at White Oak Middle School um, and always, you know, wondered what can we do to enhance this library. So uh, in 2014, I actually um, asked, you know, in the HHS committee for us to incorporate this in the list to evaluate and see if it could be refreshed. And the executive included it in 2015. When a library is closed for almost a year like this was, it feels like something's missing, um, but it's great that we had the resources to do the refresh project um, and to make it a much nicer and, and better library. So people are really going to appreciate it. The White Oak Library was originally built in 1967 and renovated 30 years ago. These latest improvements go beyond new carpet and paint. New ergonomic desks, shelving, and furniture are just a few of the upgrades patrons will see when they visit the library. On our visit, the children's room was a popular spot. I am delighted that we're opening one here, reopening this library here in White Oak. Uh, we continue to move forward, even in the really difficult budgetary challenges we've had in the past. We try to make certain that we continue on the path of something that is important for learning, for employment, but more importantly, a community space for which all people come together. Though technology has increased access to information for many, council members agree the need for community libraries has not disappeared and that they are so much more than a place where books are stored. Libraries are really evolving and I say that they're not just what we traditionally think of. They've become almost like job centers in the sense that people come here to do work or to search for jobs and young people come if they need to, you know, use uh, computers. Uh, you know, our senior citizens also are able to use all, this, all these different platforms. I mean, it really has evolved into a multi-purpose type of uh, asset. For more information on the county's other library refresh projects, visit the Department of General Services website. In White Oak, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. An expansion of Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Services could mean faster service for residents. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks has the story. During an emergency, every second can feel like a lifetime. That's why Montgomery County Fire and Rescue is expanding its services by staffing paramedics in Tacoma Park and Bethesda Fire Stations, something the department has been working on for more than a decade. Every place we put a paramedic over the last 12 years where they did not have one the day before, we saw response times reduced by three, four, five minutes to these critical paramedic uh, or ALS uh, emergencies. According to Chief Goldstein, Bethesda Cedar Lane and Tacoma Park fire stations currently do not have paramedics starting their day in the building, and this expansion changes that. We started four-person paramedic engine companies in 2006, uh, and the April 15th implementation at Tacoma Park and Bethesda culminates that what is now a 12-year project of adding a paramedic on every one of the 35 engine companies in Montgomery County. In addition to the medics, an advanced life support chase car will be added to the Aspen Hill Fire Station, making it the third in the county. We're taking our paramedics off of the transport units. We're taking the paramedic off of the cot. 
okay, and placing them on fire apparatus. This means paramedics will be available for more emergencies in their response areas. A lot of our patients that we see don't require paramedic transport um, to the hospital and today he or she, the paramedic, is engaged in taking the patient to the hospital and that takes 40 to, to 50 additional minutes. Once the changes are in place on April 15th, Goldstein says paramedics will arrive to the scene of the emergency, determine whether patients need to go to the hospital and get back in service for the next call. In Montgomery County, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. If you are concerned about a friend or a family member with an opioid addiction, there is help available. The county is offering free training to learn about reducing opioid overdoses with the use of naloxone. It's a prescription drug that can reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. The two-hour training will be offered at the locations listed on your screen. But in order to attend, you must register by calling 240-777-4538 or 240-777-4704. Coming up on County Report this week, local businesses learn about the importance of cybersecurity at a forum held in Rockville. And meet the winner of the Council Member for a Day competition. How did this all come about? We'll have the story. That and more when we come back. There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. The importance of cybersecurity for area businesses was brought home at an educational seminar in Rockville. Rock 11's Paul Westlake has more. Rockville Economic Development Incorporated, or Ready, recently hosted a cybersecurity event for small and medium-sized businesses, featuring a panel of experts from across the cybersecurity field. It's really just an opportunity for us, again, to uh, provide some educational seminars for local companies to help them succeed in the business world. We have some great companies, including local Rockville-based company VARQ, uh, who has been one of the fastest growing cyber companies in the region. The educational seminar focused on making smaller companies aware of cyber threats and steps business people can take to reduce the risk to their operations. You need intrusion detection, you need a good firewall, you need antivirus, and the element is you need a good education. It's still, it ends up being that human aspect. The weakest link um, in any cyber um, or any threat uh, obviously is generally the people and having people who are adequately um, equipped via training, this, awareness, knowledge of little things to look for um, is very important. According to a cybersecurity survey conducted by Cone Resnick, nearly half of all small and mid-sized companies have no cybersecurity program in place. For those who still think it's not a problem, the message of this seminar was loud and clear. You should care because not necessarily that sometimes they will just come and exfiltrate data or information or disrupt your operations, 
but they can use your network as a launch pad for further attacks. You can find out more about other educational seminars that Ready provides for local businesses by heading to their website at rockvilleready.org. For County Report This Week, I'm Paul Westlake. Recently, a Montgomery County high school student spent the day walking in the shoes of a county council member. It's the brainchild of Craig Rice, who wanted to give students a chance to learn about local government and leadership firsthand. So today is the day. It's really exciting to see Moira Johnson, a fellow Blazer, uh, be able to experience what it's like to be a council member for a day. So uh, hopefully this will be a great experience for her. It certainly uh, has opened the eyes of uh, folks before her who have understood about the process here in Rockville, what it is that we do, how important it is, uh, and also how you can play a part in shaping uh, what's happening here in your own community. One of the first things is you can't be a council member without a Montgomery County Council pen, so that'll be the first thing that uh, I give to her, but then she's got a huge packet like this with all kinds of great information about what we're going to be talking about today. I wanted you to just have the materials, don't let that be too intimidating to you. And then you get an official Yes, that's a good idea. Oh, oh. There's a pen in there. Some of the things we're actually going to be doing straw votes on and so uh, it's going to be a busy day. It's going to be very exciting and give her a great experience as to what it's like to be a council member. And whereas Ms. Johnson's winning entry for the council member for a day challenge was an essay that focused on parental illness and the impact that it has on children. And whereas Ms. Johnson's creativity, intellect, and interest in public service is clearly illustrated by her winning essay. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby congratulates Moira Johnson and recognizes her as council member for a day in Montgomery County, presented this 6th day of March in the year 2018, signed by our council president, Hans Riemer. Um, actually, I found it really interesting. I thought I was going to have to, like, you know, pretend for, for some of it, but it was, there were a lot of things that were heated. I can't agree with you at all. I, I believe that Glen Hills has not been treated fairly. I think they've been treated unfairly for all these years. And people are passionate. What I would ask is that if you are going to do some of these things, separate them out. Don't put them in a package together because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I feel is a waste of time. Establish it through a, a future resolution. There were people who came in for specific issues, and so, I don't know, it just kept it really interesting. And uh, now we have a show of hands. All those in favor of the consent calendar, please raise your hand. And that is unanimous. Does our council member for a day, uh, <laughs> you, may, you may raise your hand, your vote will not count, I'm sorry to say, but uh, you, you may go. participate as symbolic, you desire. Symbolic, that's right, yes. that's symbolic pre uh, participation. Well, most of the time Craig was telling me like what the topics were, you know, how everybody is really trying to help the community, but they all have different ways of getting there. And so it was really helpful to understand each side. And so he would point out, you know, who are the environmental activists or who's here from the area. So he was just walking me through each and every like comment and what it meant and really the whole weight of the situation. Well, it's been great. Uh, we actually had a very, very interesting morning that involved a 5-4 vote on the council. Uh, we delved into a number of different issues beyond just water, sewer. At the end of the day, hopefully, uh, the majority of those decisions that we have are ones that truly represent where a majority of our constituents are or where a majority of people will be able to benefit from those types of decisions that we're making. So it was an absolute <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to hang out with you. So it really was a great opportunity to be able to showcase some of the great things that go on and the myriad of different topics that we cover. Still keeping in contact and let me know. So you come up with some ideas, things, yeah, and you're like, you know what? What about this? Fixes. There you go. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So always just please keep in touch. Here's a way that you can ride the bus and help feed hungry families at the same time. It's Ride On's Give and Ride. The annual program takes place from April 15th through April 21st. Ride On passengers get a free trip by donating canned, non-perishable food items right on the bus. During the week, food collection bags will be placed near the fare boxes on all ride-on buses. All donations go to the Mana Food Center and local families. For more information, visit the website on your screen. Your skills are greatly needed during this election season. Here's how you can help. The Montgomery County Board of Elections needs registered voters to serve as election workers at polling places. 
This is for the gubernatorial primary election that will be held on June 26. Voters who are fluent in both English and Spanish are especially needed at each polling place. Students who are 16 years old and older can register to vote and serve as election workers. By doing so, students can earn student service learning hours. For more information, go to 777vote.org or call 240-777-VOTE. Coming up on County Report this week, the retirement of a long-serving fire captain in Sandy Spring means there will be big boots to fill. And minority students at MC learn how to have the inside track on landing a job. Stay with us. County Report this week will be right back. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Mark your calendars. The Montgomery County Green Fest is coming up, and you don't want to miss it. Green Fest promises to be a fun-filled day of entertainment, community, and learning. Enjoy live music and fun and games for kids, learn how to green your home and neighborhood, attend a DIY workshop, and explore exhibitor booths. Green Fest has activities for all ages and interests. Make sure you stop by and explore your path to a greener life. Hey, mister! Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. After 30 years of service, Sandy Springs Fire Captain John Feisner is retiring. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks tells us more about the captain's career and his next chapter. Friends and family are here at Sandy Spring Fire Station to celebrate the more than 30 years Captain John Feisner served with Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Services. Feisner is retiring at the end of March. It's been wonderful. I've I've been very blessed to have witnessed a lot of changes over uh, my tenure in the fire service. One change in particular Feisner reflects on is how the department has grown since he joined in the 80s when local volunteer fire companies transitioned into county employees. Since then, our fire services has grown exponentially. We currently have, a, a, I mean, well over 1,100, maybe even 1,200 active fire rescue persons as well as uh, uh, still many volunteers. Feisner, who has lived in Montgomery County since 1960, met his wife Julie, a retired firefighter herself, at the fire station in Kensington. This is the one I was going to tell you about. This one, he, uh, this was down in uh, Silver Spring. Fire Chief Scott Goldstein says Feisner will be missed. The most enjoyable part of retirement ceremonies is being able to thank them for their service and to, to see someone who's walking away from their, their career with good health. Even though Feisner is retiring, he says he's not going too far. In order to uh, keep my, my paramedic status, uh, one has to be affiliated in the county with the fire department. So I am planning to uh, pursue that by becoming a member here at the local volunteer fire department. In Sandy Spring, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. Getting a job with a Fortune 500 company sometimes isn't as simple as just applying. Sometimes it takes having an inside connection. 
for minority students without those connections, this barrier is an obstacle they are trying to overcome. Carolina Galeano has a story. Latino student leaders from the Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus led the way today in hosting the Association of Latino Professionals for America Northeast Collegiate Symposium, bringing together corporate America and students reaching and aspiring for those opportunities. Part of our mission is connecting Latinos exponentially, whether that be for internships, jobs, networking, or mentorship opportunities. So we're excited to bring those opportunities to the MC campus, looking at the talent that's here and how we connect them to higher education, graduate programs, internships, and, pro and professional jobs and for their careers. We had over 65 universities from 13 states represented today. Amid workshops, problem-solving case studies, a professional way, panel, at networking, process. students from all over the East Coast were interview ready, meeting corporate recruiters. Well, my goal was to network and to also meet people or Latinos um, that are in powerful positions. We have the CIA, NASA, and it's a great way to find representation in fields that are predominantly white, um, which is great because it inspires you and it motivates you to work towards your goal. For this Alpha alum and national leader, the symposium helps fill a gap in the pipeline to corporate America for minority students. The, the leading reason that a millennial professional of color leaves corporate America is because of a sense of a lack of belonging at work. Uh, it's a two-sided equation. It's not just us, young professionals of color, that have to do things. In our end, what we could do is you know, seek those mentors, seek the sponsors, uh, show up as you belong, show up as if you can add value. NMC students not only showed up, but played a key role in hosting this day. I feel so proud of myself and for my colleagues that we're actually accomplishing something higher than what we thought we would achieve here in a community college. You know, it's, it's important that we reach out to these professionals because, you know, what I found out today was that they really do genuinely want to help us. For County Report this week, in Tacoma Park, Carolina Galea. Are you over 50 and looking for a new job? Dozens of employers will be looking to fill positions. The 50 Plus Job Expo will take place on April 16th. It'll be held at the Bethesda North Marriott Hotel and Conference Center. The 50 and older crowd will have free access. They can get help with interviewing skills, online applications, and resume writing. Recently, David Gamsey from the Jewish Council for the Aging was on Seniors Today and told us why this expo is so important. You know, what, what is so exciting in our area is that we have such a pool of talent. And yeah. one of the things I just want to underscore is that there is a variety of employers there. We also have training institutions and, and other assistance uh, mm -hmm. organizations. But it's so important for older job seekers not to exempt themselves from certain opportunities. If you see a fast food chain there, we typically don't have them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean necessarily that they're only looking for frontline personnel. They may be looking for managers as well. Remember, the expo will be held April 16th from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. For more info, visit the Jewish Council for the Aging's website. Nine lucky individuals and groups are being singled out for their excellent community service. The county will honor them at the 7th Annual Montgomery Serves Awards. The ceremony will take place on April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. at Imagination Stage in Bethesda. The event is free and open to the public, but reservations are required. Andrea Roan of WUSA 9 will serve as MC. Learn more about the honorees and their service at MontgomeryServes.org. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll tell you about how your pet can get a free rabies shot through the county. And meet our pet of the week. She's a fun-loving puppy looking for some good karma. More about her when we come back. Interested in career success? Get to Montgomery College and we'll get you going. You can earn an associate's degree in only two years. With three campuses, award-winning faculty, and multiple online learning opportunities, Montgomery College will empower you to set your course and succeed. Want to pursue a bachelor's degree? 
If you start at MC, you can save a third on total tuition costs of a four-year program. Apply today. Planning to renovate your home? Want to live in it longer? Then you don't want to miss the 2018 Design for Life Showcase. This is the event to hear from building professionals who specialize in accessible and universal design. Plus, you'll learn how to benefit from the Montgomery County Design for Life property tax credit. The goal is to create more homes that welcome people of all ages and stages of life. This year's showcase is set for May 5th at the Silver Spring Civic Building. Find out more by visiting the Design for Life website. If you think someone might be considering suicide or drugs, be the one to help them by taking these five steps. Ask, keep them safe, be there, help them connect, follow up. If you are struggling, call Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK or the 24-hour crisis center at 240-777-4000. Be the one to help. Learn more at be the one.org. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. This year, the county is extending its annual month-long celebration of Earth Day. Events and volunteer opportunities will take place until May 5th. This week on the Aldea Radio Show, we heard more about the importance of engaging in water, land, and air conservation. Earth Month should be every month. Um, it, we just happen to highlight it in the month of April with all of these events, which hopefully can raise people's awareness of all the things that you can do to ensure that the land, air, and water in Montgomery County stays clean. So it really takes all of us to, to make those contributions. Um, we at the department try to offer these activities to make it easy for folks, but every day people should feel like this is something that's important and, and, uh, and it is a, a value to, to keep our land and air and water clean. So we appreciate that. It's that time of year again at Brookside Gardens to see a beautiful kaleidoscope of butterflies. Hundreds of them will be on vivid display at the annual Wings of Fancy show. The pretty spectacle opens on April 18th and runs through September. Once you step inside the exhibit, you'll be surrounded by swarms of brilliant live butterflies from all over the world soaring among colorful flowers. This exhibit is a must-see for all ages. School and private groups are welcome. To purchase tickets and learn more about the whimsical world of butterflies, visit the Brookside Gardens website. Going green is the theme for Montgomery County's Green Fest. Now in its fourth year, it'll be held on May 5th at Jessup Blair Local Park in Silver Spring. There is plenty for the entire family to see and do. Enjoy tree climbing, music, films, exhibitors, and activities for the kids. This event is free and open to the public from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. For more information, visit MontgomeryCountyGreenFest.org. Is it time for your pet to receive their rabies shot? To make sure that you're staying on top of it, you can now bring your pet into a monthly clinic through September. The shot is free if you purchase a pet license from the county. The clinics are sponsored by the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center. State law requires that all dogs, cats, and ferrets over four months must be constantly vaccinated against rabies. It's also the law that cats and dogs have a pet license issued by the county. You could face big fines for failing to do either of these. The clinics will be held at the Adoption Center in Durwood on the Sundays we have listed. It's open from 8 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. For more info, visit the website on your screen. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. This week, we introduce you to Karma. Look at her. She's a sweet, smiley, black and white bulldog mix puppy. At just 11 months old, she is so full of energy and a ton of fun. She's an easy dog to walk and would be a great fit for a loving family. She enjoys toys, fetch, and playing tag. For more info, call the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center at 240-773-5900 or visit Karma on the web at montgomerycountymd.gov ASD. 
With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Juan Quinette Crosby. Thank you for watching.